Hey everyone, I'm Noreen Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing Jason Voorhees, one of the 80s slashers and my personal favorite slasher ever. Ever. Like he is the best. I love him. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Jason and what potential chaos god might be controlling him in the 41st millennium. Uh, we're comparing Jason from the Jason, uh, the Friday the 13th and Jason movies to Warhammer 40k and see what god would actually have him under, well, who would be empowering him. Because let's face it, it's Jason. He's super powerful. So, a little bit about the Chaos Gods first. We're going to be talking about the potential every Chaos God from Warhammer 40k, except for the ones discontinued from Rogue Trader and 1st and 2nd edition, because they have no longer been mentioned. So the Chaos Gods that we will be talking about in today's video is Zinch, Nurgle, Korn, Slanesh, Malal, Vashtor, and potentially Belakor. Uh, the last two are not Chaos Gods. They are minor... They're very strong chaos entities, but they are not chaos gods. Vashtor is almost a chaos god. Belakor is not a chaos god. But he does control an army, so I figured he deserves an honorable mention. Although in 40k, he only loses. Anyway, Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees was born in the 1940s, I want to say, or the 50s. I think he was born in the 40s. He is an unstoppable killer zombie, is the easiest way to put it. The actual, what he actually is, is a deadite from the Evil Dead series. And I'm not kidding about that. The Necronomicon appears in Jason's movies. I think it's in the third movie. And his mother, which was the first killer, used the Necronomicon to bring back Jason's soul. And then through deadite magic, Jason became an unstoppable specter zombie. Um, Jason Voorhees was originally alive in some incarnations. The newest version of him had him survive and be human, but older versions just had him straight up being a deadite who just, as the movies progressed, got rapid, got more and more degraded over time, but he got more and more powerful each and every single time he died. This will be important later. I see you, Kovu. No, you don't have to argue with me. You had Tritos. Oh, he's arguing with me. So Jason Voorhees in the first few movies, I think the first six movies, showed a progression that his body was starting to rot and decay and be destroyed all the way up until Jason goes to Manhattan, which is a terrible movie, but it is a movie nonetheless. And we find out that Jason has a, well, weakness. Uh, in that movie, we find out that toxic waste, of all things, is something that is acidic toxic waste is something that can destroy Jason's body. And once his body is destroyed, it takes him a very long time to regenerate. In fact, it takes him like a year, uh, which is something similar to demons in Warhammer 40k. If you destroy a demon, its essence simply goes back to the warp until it can reconstitute its form. I, I do say form in quotations because demons technically are formless. Uh, they have no physical presence. Um, they exist only in the warp. And the manifestations of them in reality that you see is actually something that you conjure up for them to take an appearance of. So demons look different to everyone who sees them. And in Warhammer 40k, the way that you beat a demon is through willpower. You think that your bolter can hurt this thing, thus it hurts it. But if its willpower is stronger than yours, you're going to die. <clears throat> so, Jason is... Um, in the later movies, we find out, actually it's Jason X, we find out that Jason's body can just flat out regenerate. Because, sure, uh, the last three movies in the Jason series before the remake, hi Kovu, before the remake, kind of made Jason more zombie than Deadite. Which is a bit weird, but we're going to go with Deadite Jason. The unstoppable teleporting zombie. Um... Does Jason teleport is also up for debate. Personally, I think he can, as he is a deadite and thus has some magical properties from the Necronomicon. And we've seen deadites in the Army of Darkness, well, in the Evil Dead series, be able to teleport. Uh, what are you doing? Don't you argue with me. 
My cat is talking talking back so much lately. So, uh, Jason Voorhees has a confirmed 151 kills, uh, which doesn't set him as the highest murderer in the slasher horror series. Uh, Pinhead, I think, has more. Michael Myers has more. I believe Freddy has slightly less, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I haven't checked that yet. Um, Arctic Clown has less. We're going to be talking about, uh, in this series, we're going to be talking about a bunch of slashers. So if you have an idea for a slasher that you want to see in the next video, comment in the comment section down below. So Jason's powers is regeneration, teleportation, uh, increased strength, aggression. Uh, he is slightly intelligent. He's not very intelligent, but he is smart enough to trick people. And he is smart enough to get the jump on people. And he's also smart enough to potentially drive a car. We don't know if he drives a car, but for him to get from Manhattan back to Crystal Lake in New Jersey, he would have to. He would have to. Uh, he's also not opposed to leaving Crystal Lake, though he does prefer to stay there. And if you bound him in his place of rest where he first died, then he is immobile until reawoken by an outside force. Usually something like a cable line under the water that electrocutes him or somebody, you know, having sex in his general vicinity. That's another thing. Jason hates sex. If you are horny within a 20 miles of this creature, he is coming after you. He is going to kill you. Um, Jason strongly opposes anything that leads to people being distracted from saving children. But Jason will also kill children. Uh, he tried to kill Tommy as a kid uh, before Tommy became an adult, and then Jason killed him again. Uh, Jason is kind of, um, how to put this, he hyper-focuses on the one person that he really, really, really wants to kill. Uh, so if he sets his goals on killing, um, we'll just keep going with the Tommy uh, character, for instance. Tommy was the little boy who chopped Jason to bits. Um, then Jason regenerated. Well, actually, someone ate his heart. He possessed him, and then he returned into Jason when a Voorhees was possessed, even though she was dead, and then he emerged as Jason. We're not going to get into that. Dead Eye powers were just going to be good enough. Um, so uh, Jason then continued to go after Tommy until he killed him. Okay, that's it. Uh, he will stop going after somebody if somebody else presents a more tempting target. Uh, like he won't kill a child who hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, if an adult who has done something wrong is within the general vicinity, he will go after the adult over the child. Um, he will go after horny teenagers instead of adults. Uh, because he views them as more problematic. Uh, Jason just strongly opposes sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which means that Slanesh is kind of off the table in this game. But let's go through the list now. Zinch is known for being the master of magics. Magic items, magic artifacts. They are the one that convinced Arabus to turn against chaos, uh, turn, against ca turn against the Imperium and join chaos. Thank you, Brain. And it, all magic items tend to be associated more with Zinch than most other Chaos Gods. Nurgle is the other one that uses a lot of magic, and so, is, so does Slanesh, but Slanesh uses a lot of magic items, not magical tomes. Magical tomes like the Necronomicon would fall under Zinch's domain. But you might be asking yourself, well, Erebus and the word bearers summon a plethora of demons. They don't discriminate between the Chaos powers. Uh, they view them all as gods. So Zinch, Zinch's influence on uh, Jason Voorhees in this case would make him more magical. We would see him doing more teleportation, more ranged attacks because Zinch favors ranged over close combat. Uh, but Jason is an unstoppable force that can regenerate and is a zombie. That sounds a bit more like Nurgle, doesn't it? Well, maybe. Zinch, I think, is not the. I think Zinch is the person who would create the Necronomicon, but then knowing Zinch, Zinch would sabotage themselves by allowing the other Chaos powers to influence the Necronomicon, thus allowing something like Jason Voorhees to be summoned. Even though it doesn't benefit Zinch itself, Zinch works 
both for themselves and against themselves because that is Zinch. They're, they're kind of an idiot. Yeah, I know they're the smartest idiot that you know. It's like being outsmarted by a dumbass. That's Zinch. So do I think Zinch, some, Zinch is the one that controls Jason in the 40k universe, if Jason was there? No, but also maybe. I think that Zinch plays a part in it, but not necessarily the one that wants to be the one in control. Uh, Zinch is more like, hey, I made this fancy book. And then Jason, the Necronomicon, used Deadites, which then Jason became Jason. Uh, so I don't think Zinch is the one that Jason would follow. Nurgle. Nurgle is the god of death, rot, decay, Stockholm Syndrome, and uh, renewal. Uh, hi, Kovu. What are you doing all the way back there? Don't play with the... Oh, no, he's going to play with the... I left stuff out. So off camera, Kovu just dumped cereal on the floor. Thank you, Kovu. I love you. Okay, so Nurgle, death, drugs. No, well, death, drugs. That's Slanesh. Uh, death, famine, pestilence, renewal. Uh, Nurgle brings life, Nurgle takes life away. This is the canon Nurgle. Um, he is not honorable. He is not as pleasant as people think. In fact, just look up the bloat flies for that because when a plague beast just becomes like unhappy and goes through hyper depression, it becomes a bloat fly. I, it, it's horrible. Um, the followers of Nurgle tend to be more chatty, uh, willing to talk to their opponents. Jason has only ever talked once, and that's when his soul was possessing a police officer, which he then tricked a, one of the girls to follow him, and then he tried to insert black blood demon transfer stuff into her. There's a lot of weird stuff with Jason. Uh, Nurgle could be the what gives him the ability to come back to life. And I think Nurgle did not influence Jason as much as you may think. Uh, Jason is an unstoppable zombie, which is right up Nurgle's alley. But Nurgle would have given Jason more regeneration and Jason wouldn't have the ability to feel the pain that he does. We do know that Jason is pain resistant uh, up until a certain point in the movies, up until like movie three, Jason is feels all the pain that he goes through. Uh, when he gets hanged, he struggles, he groans, he's trying to get out. He is feeling the pain. But after the fourth through ninth movie, Jason isn't feeling pain anymore. So it could be that Nurgle had an influence over him. So maybe Nurgle is giving him some power. But Nurgle opposes Zinch at all opportunities. Nurgle rarely works with Zinch unless it's absolutely necessary such in the case of the Runestorm Demons, or... No, that's pretty much it. Uh, when he assaulted Terra. Uh, Nurgle really, really, really hates working with Zinch or any Zinch artifacts. But that does not mean that Nurgle would not influence somebody that has fallen to Zinch. So if uh, Jason's mother read the Necronomicon and then brought Jason back, she probably had to do a ritual to both Zinch and Nurgle in order to get the boy back. Zinch got the soul back, Nurgle brought the body. Um, now that is not them working together, that is her doing two separate rituals from the Necronomicon to summon Jason. But I think this is where Jason's whole attitude ends, because while, while Nurgle's followers do suffer with Stockholm Syndrome and do think that their master is benevolent and gives them gifts and all of this other thing. Jason, on the other hand, is a creature of wrath and hate. Uh, he opposes everything that he sees. He hates sex. He hates renewal because, well, if you hate sex, you hate any procreation at all. Nurgle is about procreation regardless of the form that it takes which Zinch then, well, Slanesh then siphons that power from uh, because Slanesh is a dirty whore. Be yeah, if you have any emotions at all, Slanesh is stealing some of it. So I don't think that Nurgle is the greatest inspiration, but I do think that a ritual could have taken place to potentially recover the body of Jason and make it so that the body can keep regenerating. 
But there is another god that constantly regenerates their followers, and that is Korn. Korn is the god of blood, murder, and slaughter. No, he is not the god of honor. That is not true in any of the fluff. He does not view honor as something that is to be upheld. He is just the god of blood and murder. Uh, He is a terrible, terrible deity, and he is malicious in all aspects. This is the god that I strongly think that Jason would be under. Um, Jason Voorhees is a is hell-bent on killing anybody who enters his territory, spilling the blood of anybody in his path, whether that be another supernatural being, a hologram, campers, teenagers, anything in his path, he will kill. Um, Jason prefers close combat, prefers his machete, actively goes out of his way to retrieve a machete-like instrument to kill people, but is not opposed to killing people in the most horrific ways possible. He is a master of every tool that he equips. He knows how to use any and all improvised instruments as a weapon, which this strongly hints that he might be corn. Um, the unstoppable wrath and every time he dies, he just comes back is something that Korn does to his favorite followers. Keep in mind, Karn the Betrayer, in a story that may or may not be canon now, we don't know, Karn the Betrayer, while on terror, was run over by a rhino and died. Uh, Karn clapped his cheeks and brought him back to life. This isn't the only time that Karn the Betrayer has been brought back to life. Technically, the Dark Angels killed Karn the Betrayer and, well, Karn Porn brought him back to life. So Korn being a god that can constantly regenerate is something that uh, would make sense for Jason. Um, Jason would be a champion of Korn, but with such a low kill count, it's, it's very weird. And I know this sounds weird, 151 kills is a low kill count, but considering that the average follower of Korn kills anywhere between 100 to a trillion, I'm not even joking about that. Well, not the average. And the average only kills like one to two hundred, I'd say, uh, before they get caught by the Inquisition. Um, but their champions can kill anywhere from a thousand to a trillion. And yeah, the thing that I don't like about the um, corn being the god that controls Jason is that Jason Voorhees builds shrines. Those shrines could be using deadite powers which would fall back under Zeech. Um, So, yeah. It's very weird because Jason Voorhees does use magic. Uh, And Karn, or Korn, is opposed to magic, but not opposed to sorcerers summoning his demons in, which he then kills. So, he's opposed to magic unless it benefits him, and technically all of his actions, demons, and... Abilities are all magic as well. He just pretends that it's not because it makes him feel better because he's insecure. Um, that being said, I think Jason does embody the wrath of Corn, And the only Chaos God here out of these four that I can rule out is Slanesh. Uh, Slanesh is the, is the opposite. Uh, Slanesh would have... Uh, cults dedicated to sex, drugs, rock and roll, because that's what Slanesh is. And I'm tired of people on the internet saying that's not what Slanesh is. It 100% is what Slanesh is. Uh, Slanesh would be more Hellraiser type demons. Angels to some, demons to others. Um, Where they view their gifts of pain as a benevolent thing to the people who open up the cube. I do want to do an episode on Pinhead. So if you want to see Pinhead, comment down below. But I do think that Jason is ideologically opposite to Slanesh. Jason only takes lives, doesn't bring lives. He doesn't do any substances. He kills substance users and he actively goes after them. He goes after people taking pleasure in torturing people. Uh, Jason actively hates that as he was tortured to death. Uh, so I don't think that Slanesh is the god that would influence Jason at all. <laughs> um, so my, my interpretation of what Jason is, is a, well, he is a deadite 
And I do think that a deadite would be an, uh, how to put this? He wouldn't be an ever chosen, but he would be a chaos undecided, uh, undivided. I do think that Jason embodies more of corn than any of the other gods. His body might come from Nurgle and the sorcery and all of his magical abilities come from Siege. That being said, there's another option. He might be a demon of Bellacor. Bellacor embodies all four chaos gods. Uh, so it stands to reason that Bellacor would be using the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon could summon this creature to deal damage on a planet. And I do think Jason could probably take a space marine in a fight. Maybe not a chapter, but definitely a single space marine. Maybe a bunch of scouts. Definitely the Imperial Guard. He'd burn away some of his body, but the second he gets a teleport, he would just be gone. Ospexes can't pick him up as he's cold-blooded uh, because, you know, he's dead. Um, so it would be very hard for them to deal with him. And also, willpower doesn't work against Jason as Jason is just a force of wrath. He is a physical being that you cannot will away like a demon of corn. So I do think that Jason falls under Bellacor's domain. I think he's part of the army of darkness from Bellacor because he is a deadite and Bellacor has used the Necronomicon. Uh, it's, yeah, it, I think he falls under an ever chosen, not an ever chosen, an undecided, an undivided, uh, where he embodies Zinch, Nurgle, and Korn, and Bellacor is the one that uses him. Vashtor, on the other hand, probably uses Jason X because that movie was fucking terrible. And we're not going to get into that. The movie is awful. I love it. Overall, I think that Jason is an undiv undivided. And I think that's where he fits more. But if I were to put a percentage on these, it would be 70% corn, 15%, probably 20% Nurgle, 10% Siege. Because Jason doesn't really build shrines all too often. He dreams about building shrines. But that's not the same. The dream realm is, well, kind of a pocket dimension. So when Jason is in there, he does build shrines, uh, dragging his victims to his old hideout, where he then offers them to his mother. His mother, in this case, might just be a Zinch demon. Um, because she used the Necronomicon. Yeah, it, it stands to reason that a Zinch demon would take the form of his mother to trick Jason into doing things. So I do think that Zinch would probably be in control of Jason most of the time, but Jason's wrath would be the thing that really gets him going. So yeah, that's the, that's the video. I did not expect a 20 minute rant out of this. If you enjoyed this video, please comment down below what demon, what demon, what slasher from any franchise you would like to see. I, I want to do videos on Ark the Clown, Ark the Clown, um, Michael Myers, uh, Freddy Krueger, you know, the classics, Chucky, and all sorts of things like that. So if you have, a com if you have an idea, comment down below. As always, I'm Norman Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.